Hi everybody, it's Katie here today. I just wanted to show you the Montessori Math Workbook, Primary Book 2. Um, this is the second in the series and I wanted to go through and show you kind of how I set this up. After it's printed and bound, you can purchase it printed and bound on Amazon or you can print it and bind it yourself. I use um, a disc punch and these are one inch discs. You can see how big they are. These are from an old Happy Planner, but you can use any brand um, discs if you wanna do it this way. I like the disc bound because I can pull things out and move them around as you'll see that I'm going to do. But the book on Amazon is printed beautifully and you can use these same hacks you, um, with that book as well. Okay. So as we flip through, I'm just gonna go to the parts. Um, I'm gonna stop at the parts where I would set up the workbook before I would do the activities with my child. So here we have the table of contents. Okay, so you can use these roll badges. Um, some children who are ready for higher level math are not the best writers or cutters. So I have some tips on here um, of how you can address that situation if you have a child like that, um, if that applies. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of things are like cut and paste, but there's also a lot of writing. So you can be your child's scribe when needed. All right, now we have um, this book, and I should have said this in the beginning, but you probably already know. So we basically go from, we pick up where we left off in the last workbook and we start with squaring chains. Then, so all of the short bead chains will cover. Then we do the thousand chain and then we do go into the decimal system. So the bulk of this book is on the decimal system and the golden beads and the golden bead material, the golden bead operations. So everything in the book is still in your concrete mathematics. We haven't moved on to abstraction quite yet, although some of the activities are preparing your child for abstraction, like writing down the answers and looking at how the problems are written out, things like that. Okay, so, and then at the end, we end with review exercises, looping review exercises that incorporate a lot of the concepts, many, many of the concepts from the first workbook. Okay, so that being said, this is a page, these two pages are pages that I would prep ahead of time. So all of the envelopes for the beads and the bean shade arrows are pages that you'll want to pull out of the workbook completely. So you won't need these in the workbook because all of these will be cut out and placed here in these two organizers. Now you can keep them intact. These don't have to come out of your book, um, but you'll want to cut out the bead chain arrows, the beads, the bead squares, and all of the envelopes that hold them. So here are what the envelopes look like. But then, once you've prepared them, how I instruct you to prepare them, they're going to look like this. So I have the beads on one side and the bead chain arrows on another side. And these can stay within the workbook. So these back pages don't actually have to come out. On the left-hand side, I haven't actually glued anything down and it works really well this way. So when you're ready, when your child's ready to work, for example, with these beads, with the nine chain, you can, you'll have them prepped and ready, most likely. Um, you'll probably want to do the cutting for them. And you can place them, I've glued the back side down in the spaces. You can place them in the envelope and just fold them like that. If you have a little sticker that you wanna put down, that's great. If not, when you fold up the workbook, these will just stay in place. So I have all of the beads in here without actually gluing down the flaps. And that worked best in my trial experience. Over here, where all the arrows are, I have actually glued down 
the envelope portion and I only have left like the, an opening on the top, which is kind of the side, but if you're looking at it this way, it's the top. <laughs> so these are a little harder to pull out, to be honest. So you can kind of get your finger in there and like open up the space and grab the beads you need, or the, sorry, the arrows that you need. Um, but you figure out what works for you. If it works not gluing them down, just gluing the back side to the piece of paper, then do that. And then a little hack for the bead squares, I used a little paper clip to keep them all together. And here are your bead squares. So Montessori math is so organized in a classroom and I really wanted to give a similar experience on paper. I really like to be organized. It just helps. So this is something I would prepare before introducing this lesson to my child. Okay. So there are all of your envelopes that you make and I have, you know, glue this side down. So when you fold it, you can see the colored sides of the envelope. Here are all the short bead chains that I showed you I had cut out and the squares that I had cut out. And then we just have some on paper exercises. There are instructions, bead chain exercises, summarizing sentences, helping toward abstraction a little bit. Then we have our thousand chain lesson. This is super fun. So all of your pages, all of the beads that you need, all of the pages that you need to complete this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the this mat this thousand chain mat apart. It's about 27 feet long. You're gonna tape it all together. You're gonna to tape these end to end and have your child find um, as you count and that all the instructions are here. Um, you're gonna cut and paste these onto the thousand chain. Now, if you wanna prepare these ahead of time, you can keep them in an envelope. Um, you can you know, pick an envelope to put them in or, or use a separate envelope. And as you're working, I suggest, here is like a letter sized envelope. So if you have a disc bound system, you can literally punch the envelope and keep it in here. Um, if not, you can just get creative with it. You can use a um, plastic sleeve protector but I suggest folding this up when you're done, folding it end to end. So you're gonna have this long 27 foot long chain, fold it end to end and keep it with this workbook as a record for your child. And we use it, and I'll show you the next activity we use it on, as a control for this activity. So this is basically the thousand chain on one sheet of paper, and your child will use, can use the long thousand chain as a control of error. Then we go into different ways of making 1,000 with the golden beads. Here is a 3D version, and I have a flat version. Um, your child makes a flat version on the paper. Introduction to the decimal system, your child learning the decimal system, just different ways of matching up the numbers, writing the numbers as you start to introduce them. You'll have the complete layout, which here are your beads that you can use, or if you have regular beads, like actual Montessori beads, you can use those. If you made them all larger and they're all this size, you can use that size in a bigger work surface. I give you lots of options. And they're all included, as many beads as you need are included on these sheets here. So you'll want to save those beads because these are the beads that we use for the operations. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Not in that order, but <laughs> addition, subtraction, multiplication, and then division. So this is a golden beads bank. So I tell you how to fold this up. You're gonna go, you're gonna fold on the bottom blue line, and then you're gonna put hot glue on all of these so that you made four little compartments for your golden beads and I will show you what that looks like. So then, and again, if you have the printed version or yours is bound in another way, you don't need to actually take this out, you just need to cut the side, fold up and hot glue. And yes, you'll need to cut out all of the beads. I would suggest cutting them for your child ahead of time 
so that they're perfectly cut and ready to go and that doesn't become a source of frustration. And as you'll see in other videos of me showing you how to do some of the operations, they're just really easy to just pull out of the pocket and put in the space. So you can put these out however you want. Um, and then when you need them, okay, so I did say you don't have to take this out. Now, I would suggest <laughs> cutting it out of your workbook because you can then take your golden bead spank out and then keep it next to you as you work on the operations. Okay. And again, you do whatever works for you. I'm just giving you some suggestions. So just different ways that we reinforce how the beads are related to each other, getting ready to understand the place values in the decimal system. And knowing that two hundredths is written like this and six tens is written like this. This is also called 60. This is also called 200. Um, we're getting there. So introduction to the decimal system. Now we have the decimal system cards. There is one set, all of these are in here, one set of large cards and three sets of small cards. Now these I have, you can get creative with these. You can use envelopes. I prefer, these came as three hole punched, but I made them, I punched them for the disc bound, with my disc bound punch. Um, I prefer these plastic sleeves because they're easy to slide in and out. And you can see the numbers underneath. I'm going to move this away for just a second and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here, when we do problems, I have the option to set these out like so. And I have all of these so I can have them set up all out for my child. Whoops like this. So these are just baseball card holders. I have a page, I'll have a page with all of these, everything I use linked. Um, so that that's set up and ready to be used. And then can also be like put back in the notebook or in the back, or maybe you have like a supplemental binder you use next to your workbook with things like this that you pull out of the workbook. Um, and you would just need, let's see, that much space. So those are the small cards. The large cards I just have in one, a single one kind of separated out. But when we do a problem, I would set these out as well. Okay, so let me move these out of the way and we'll get back to checking out inside the workbook. So, is this normal for somebody to go through every page of a curriculum before you buy it? <laughs> okay, here we go. Follow the directions. This is a fun activity. Um, okay, and then now you give you instructions on how to do the complete layout given the cards and the beads that you have. Um, you have options. Then we have just some more reinforcement, matching symbols to the numerals or to the quantities. Crisis of 10. Then we have fetching. So we start understanding, can you grab, can you fetch four thousands? So then the four thousands would need to be fetched, um, the cards. And there's cards included, everything that you need is included in the workbook. You need no other materials. How numbers are formed, and then you're gonna practice with your child making the number here and then writing the number in the space. So you use the large numeral cards for this activity. Then you use this, uh, one sheet. This is, you'll just use this one paper so this will come out. And you'll use this, you'll glue them down for form this formation of numerals. So you'll ask your child, give me 1,000, two hundreds, three tens, and five units. And then you'll put the number together and read what number was made. Golden beads operations overview. So I just give you some 
overall information, how to use the materials in here, how to use the operations mats, what, why we use, what color we use, colors we use, what everything's called, so just to prepare you. And then here, you have very specific step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the operations using the golden beads that you're given. So let me show you. Here are the problems. There are six to 12 problems for every type of operation. So static or dynamic addition, each has its own set of problems. Um, so here is your addition mat. This you can choose to pull out and laminate to keep in your book, do whatever you want with it. Some people choose to buy a physical workbook and then um, also get a digital download and then you can print out whatever extra pages you want as high quality as your printer will allow, but without printing the entire workbook. Um, some more golden beads activities, preparing for dynamic edition. Dynamic edition involves exchanging with your golden beads bank. So that's when you would want to pull out your bank and keep it handy. Um, you need it to fetch the beads anyway, but then you can make exchanges within the bank. And I go over very specific step-by-step -step instructions. And if this is not enough for you to understand, or you just want a little further clarification, I made a video going through every single operation with static and with addition or with dynamic. So you'll know um, how to do that after watching the videos and after reading this, you'll feel very confident and you can always have this with you as you and your child are working through it together. That's the beauty of learning together. So now we have our subtraction mat for, with green for subtraction, larger section at the top because your largest numeral cards will go there. And we'll flip through the rest of this quickly. Again, very specific instructions, different ways subtracting on paper. And we move into multiplication, yellow for multiplication, no individual lines because some of these will have two and some of these will have three um, multiplicands. So again, you'll have very specific instructions here. And video if you need it. So you'll have dynamic, multiplication, reinforcing what a multiplier is, this, will come in handy when your child is drawing his or her own beads for problems on paper like this. Again, you can be the scribe if needed. Subtraction mats. So here is one place where you definitely need to pull the mats out of the book when you're working because these all need to be separated. This is your general mat and this is the main mat you start with, and then you have three separate mats. You will either need two or three, depending on what the divisor is. So the dividend goes on top, and then if you're dividing by three, you have three separate mats. So you're showing your child that you're dividing, you're distributing the dividend into three different to three different, in this case, we talk about children. So to three different children, everybody gets the same amount. Um, that's the difference between, and I like them to be like cut apart if at all possible. So you can really separate um, as you're just showing your child. That was the intention. So then we have dynamic division. And then we also do remainders and I have instructions there for you and with a zero in the dividend and instructions there for you. So just building upon going basic to more complicated and then another fun activity for your child to draw the beads, reinforcing colors for the operations. And then here we have at the end a looping review section. So these, all of these problems were a review from the first workbook or review from the 
second workbook. So most of them though, so if there's 60 questions which are intended to be done in 60 different days. So your child will fill in, shade in like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then write the date, fill in the time started and the time ended. So these are teaching exercises in themselves, learning the day of the week, the date, learning um, how to tell time and how to draw a shorthand and a longhand. Um, and then just a very short exercise, reviewing some concept from the last workbook, something or something your child may already know. Um, I do go into a little bit, for example, here's some golden beats exercises at the end. You can see this is questions 21 through 30 are more like what your child ha is, has learned since starting the book. So one day you could maybe do an exercise out of the book and another day do a review question or start off with a review question and then get into a new lesson in the front of the book. Just flipping through so you guys can see. And then I have this nice little letter that you can write your child or your student for um, completing the book. Now I do wanna say something before ending this video just because it popped in my head. This is not something that would necessarily be done in one day. You can do one problem in one day or your child might wanna do two problems. And if your child gets sick of dynamic addition problems and wants a new challenge, you can move on to subtraction if your child really already does understand the addition and go back and finish them later. Um, if you're keeping a record for your homeschool, you may just wanna date what was completed when, just depending on your state standards. Um, and if you're not keeping a record, then it really, that's just let, follow your child's lead. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you.